In terms of driving dynamics, driving and steering behavior are as decisive as comfort. And since driving comfort will become even more important in the future, we're currently developing a new controlled chassis, which we brought along in this vehicle. As a comparison, we also brought a regular production vehicle with a normal adaptive chassis. We created some driving footage that will show the difference between these two very impressively. For the sake of completeness, we are also able to demonstrate a conventional chassis with this vehicle here. The difference is obvious. The new chassis glides across the bumps. There is no pitching and the car is very composed. The current production chassis looks a lot more nervous when it comes to pitching and rolling. And the new chassis is able to make the car a lot calmer. This makes the ride a lot more comfortable for the passengers. The differences are even more pronounced compared to the conventional chassis, which is the most unsettled of the three. The latest chassis is the calmest and the best one and performs on a completely different level. The differences between the three chassis have become very clear, and that's something that we and our customers can look forward to, particularly in future when the car will become more autonomous and customers may want to read a book or something like that. They can look forward to a very comfortable ride. And the great thing about the new chassis is not only improved comfort, but also improved dynamics. We are able to reduce rolling. The car responds more quickly to steering inputs. It handles more precisely, and that improves driving fun. Now that we have dealt with the chassis, we are now moving on to the steering system, which is the main connection between driver and car and is not only important when it comes to steering feedback, but also in terms of the car's driving behavior. We developed a new steering system which is featured in this car. As you said, this car has the new steering system whose software gives us a lot more opportunities to influence steering properties in such way that we can respond to requirements with regard to certain car models or customer preferences. You picked a particular setting for the steering system. Which one did you choose? It's the standard setting. It should feel completely normal. Yes, the car responds very well and feels precise. Even greater inputs feel quite linear. It's just like you expect from a production vehicle. It's a very good basis for the new steering system. It feels very much like a production car. What other choices do we have? Well, you could select a different driving profile, like Sport, for example. That's a very direct and sporty mode. In this case, we made software adjustments, which shows that software is becoming an increasingly important part of our work. And here we have implemented a very direct setting. OK, let's give it a try. Oh yes, I could feel that immediately. It almost feels like a go-kart. It's super direct. It only needs very small inputs, but the car responds well, too. And when I go faster, the steering becomes less direct, meaning we're going back to a more normal steering response. It feels very stable, even with greater inputs. The steering bandwidth is quite impressive. Yes, and the software gives us the opportunity to respond to all kinds of platforms and models in our portfolio. This also opens opportunities in optimizing driver assistance systems. A lane assist or travel assist system can benefit quite a bit from the steering system in terms of haptics. As with the steering system and the chassis earlier, we are seeing a lot of potential, but what these systems look like in detail and when they go into production cannot be revealed at this time.